everyone i am brandon carey and today we are going to be starting the new set eldraine is finally on arena and that means new cards and new decks um today i have uh this uh deck here a golgari uh, mid-range deck that I have been piloting for a while in um, in the best of one queue. Um, more or less, uh, you try to win. You, your goal here is to win um, by getting a bunch of, uh, of of fairly high value creatures on the board and then swinging with them, like um, like Questing Beast, who is just a pile of really really strong stats and effects um the great henge which is an extraordinarily strong card um if you can get it out on time which is usually which is hopefully around turn turn four because your goal is to kind of turn three riding regisaur here get that seven power on the board and then get that full discount to to play this for two mana on the next turn and once you do uh, the mana boost, um, the life gain, the extra power on the board, plus um, drawing cards for every creature you play, it's just an extraordinarily powerful effect to have in your in your deck. Um, it's one of mayhem exists uh, mostly for removal bait, but it's also like another way to to end the game because the four four flying with trample for four mana, which is a very very good stat line. Um, rankle. Also, um, a 4-mana 3-3 three, three with Flying Haste is a very powerful effect, too. Uh, for one job, you have Knight the Evan Legion, which is very... like Now that I've started running it, it's a very powerful card. Um, the ability to give it Death Touch on a whim for 3-mana, um, plus its ability to grow stronger as the game progresses, makes it a very, a very difficult card to deal with if you don't take care of it early. Um... Or Chamber Guardian. Uh, it has synergy with the Great Henge, but also it's a good way to get extra um, creatures to play. Um, and the Adept, so you can play with an instant speed, gives you a lot of versatility in how the card is played. Uh, Paris Druid for mana. Once upon a time, also really strong card, especially if you get in your opening hand, because if you can cast it for free, the ability to fix your hand by choosing a creature or land from the top five cards of your library just at the start of the game super strong super strong trait um and assassin's trophy and murderous rider exist as our um as our removal uh having seven cards dedicated to being able to get rid of threats uh helps smooth the deck out i i ran a remember what i had in this slip sop before i think i i took out some paradise druids and a spawn of mayhem to uh, fit the three assassins trophies into my and from my sideboard. And now that I've been playing, since I've been playing best of one, having that extra removal ends up mattering a lot more than you think. Um, the land, uh, the giving them an extra land sucks sometimes, but it's worth it to get rid of that that key piece that will snowball into a win. So, uh, without further ado, uh, let's get started playing a couple games. got the lands I need, I've got some couple of good early drops, and I've got this open plan my opening hand. This is strong. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to play Temple and look at the top card of my deck. I'm going to keep that. Cause I wanna be able to turn um turn three riding registrar and then into once upon a time. Or into Great Henge. Ooh, this is going to be a um, a cavalcade deck, so I do have to kind of be f be fast. 
that once I get my 7-6 out, that that pile of stats should save me. Uh, since I haven't played this spell yet, I'm going to cast Once Upon a Time now. I'm going to get... A... I'm going to swamp. Get my, to guarantee my land drops. But I do have removal. I want to keep that... I want to keep that Crash Reboot on top so that I can um, have a, a potential blocker against this deck. Naturally. And then you'll do three. And then we will uh, turn three our Rotten Registrar. It probably won't die unless they dedicate a lot of removal spells to it, which is early in the game they're probably not going to do. What they're likely going to do is they're going to make the Dodger unblockable and then swing in. And now that we have um, the Great Henge, Serving as a little barrier for us. Which you will have next turn. Uh, that will essentially um, really slow them down. Because the life gain and the uh, and the card draw will, will be wondrous. I'm gonna discard Paradise Druid. Cast Great Henge. I'm not going to cast Murderous Rider just yet. But the fact that he does have to deal with the Great Henge, I will be able to get life every single turn from here on out. going to do is I'm going to use... No. And that gets rid of a problem. I think what I'm going to probably do next is actually just hard cast the creature of Murderous Rider. Um, A, for for life gain, and um, for because of his lifelink ability, and B, just to get some more bodies on the board. Because he's at a point where he's going to have to start blocking. So I'm going to throw this other Registore in the grave. And I'm going to actually cast Murderous Rider. The creature. And we're going to play the Questing Beast. And at this point, I, I honestly don't know how they intend to uh, keep up. Because we're going to, to really snowball. Because um, I, I have the numbers on my side and life gain to kind of negate cavalcade which is now dead uh they're probably gonna block this no they're not gonna block they're just gonna uh, take it okay um it also works i don't know how they're going to come back from one hp but i suppose it's possible i read the remove a lot of creatures okay um, yeah, I'll just double block. Yeah, that was the right call. They they really didn't have a shot at this point. Um, I, I'd already kind of gotten too much value out of my deck. Well, 
once you get the Great Henge out, um, this deck starts to really snowball. Because then you start playing creatures and drawing cards and getting creatures and drawing cards. And Rotten Registrar, despite the fact you discard a card each turn, is actually a, a very, very powerful effect. Um, and we're already... This is a wonderful opening hand. A beautiful. I'm going to take the temple. I'm going to keep that to guarantee my fourth land drop. And then we'll um, we'll cast uh, Once Upon a Time next turn. Yeah, we'll take the Questing Beast. I will put that on the bottom. And we will play a turn three Regisaur so that on turn four we can just play the Great Henge. Okay. Let's broaden your existence. At least I don't discard a card because of that effect. Um, that's fine. Although I'm not sure why you did that when you know I have the uh, the questing beast. I have you attack, and then you attack, and Oko is going to die. So it's the Gualo in your deceit. I can still play Great Henge next turn as long as you don't play Ogo again. Which would suck, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Oh, or I could just do literally this. No reason not to just attack. You can't adapt at this. Oh, actually, yes, you can. It would just cost you a lot of mana to do so. Yeah, that was probably the right call. Really, the moment the Great Henge resolves, that is kind of like the win condition of the of the deck. Because uh, it, it just gives you too much value in that one card. It, it's a, a nine drop that you don't really cast, you cast it for two, usually. Um, although I have cast it for, for three or, or, or four or five mana every now and then. Ooh, this is uh, not the best hand, but also not bad. Okay, we have a, a two drop. I'm sorry with Night of Heaven Legion is also a, a pretty good opening play. It's not as good as um, Once Upon a Time, but it's still a very, very solid opening play. Sultai. Oh no, this is probably um, four color lands. 
Yeah, this is this is this is a land stack. At least um we do have the assassin's trophy, which we can in theory use to uh questing these. Okay. gonna kill that thing now. I would not have spent three mana on that, but you are welcome to do whatever you desire. Play the spawn of mayhem, which is not legendary, even though it feels like it should be. Yeah, this is a lands deck. They're they're trying to get lands. Kind of have to block. Uh, you don't really have to block that if you don't want to. I'll let you. Thankfully, I don't have any board sweeps that will kill both spawns. Yep! There we go. doing all right but then again we're only in silver and um we haven't really hit gold yet so we're doing okay um these decks these games are going by pretty quick quickly though mm. the lands i have to start with are slow However, I do have both of my colors in my hand, and I have enough early plays where I can um, I can last if I. Okay, this is a good hand to keep for the the cavalcade deck. Actually, I think I wish I could play my Knight of Legion on my first turn, but oh no, I'm I fucked up. Uh. Should play Castle Lock Wayne. I can kill Cavalcade of Calamity um, on turn three. Oh no! Uh, that's good. That's really good. Uh, because I can play this and it will probably get shocked, but that's okay. I think next turn what I'm going to end up doing is killing Cavalcade of Calamity and then casting my next knight. Because killing Cavalcade of Calamity will actually really staunch the bleeding. And the fact that my knight's a 2-1 will make it, um, block easier. I do wish I had stronger creatures so that I could enable my Great Henge. Oh, really? Um... I wouldn't have done that, but you're welcome to it. Uh, I think I made him tilt. I mean, he was still not a bad position. He had two creatures to my one. Um, 
Well, I guess if he had a bad hand like that was just lands, then he might have had a reason to concede because he didn't really like because that that was his his one card, his his big combo. This, if I didn't have once plan my hand, I probably would not keep this. And the temple. I don't actually want Rankle, so we're gonna scry him off. And at the end of their turn, I'm gonna cast him once upon a time. Yeah, we're gonna do that now, actually. Eh. That's actually, that's actually really good. That's really good. Um... Because it'll give us the turn three Reggie Registar into um, turn four Henge. Registar is nice because it's a very hard body to just permanently get rid of. We can also, um, alternatively, swing first, hold mana up, and see if they make a decision. Okay, and now we're going to... This will probably get countered. Or it won't. No surprise didn't get countered. But that's good. That's actually real good. I have discard this, which sucks, but... Worth it. Um, play a forest, and... See if this doesn't get at least spell pierced. Because I would spell pierce this if I were them. I did not get spell pierced, which is a genuine surprise to me. Okay. This isn't a flyer's deck, is it? Because I don't... I don't see the, the direction this deck is going. I'll give her this swamp next turn. That's not going to be a big deal. That's actually fine. That's actually fine. So, watch this. Now, I'm not going to play too much because. I want to have Assassin's Trophy open, and I'm also afraid that they're going to have a board clear at this point. Which, if I were them, I would play a Sleeper right now. A lot of Sleeper? Also, not really a problem. Because that means I can just do this. And yeah, it goes three deep, but I don't really care. They're not going to have three turns to, to do that, to do anything about it. This is the part where I would where I would expect a cleansing nova.
kind of have to do it. Interesting. Yep. Oh yeah, it's tapped. I can swing in for game. stream. I tend to have a lot of better stream luck than I do when I'm actually playing for some reason, and I'm not sure what, what that is. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. This is not the worst hand. I will keep this. First, we'll play this. Ooh, I'm gonna miss two great hands. That's gonna suck, but you know, you can never tell what you're gonna play until after. Mm. Simic Flash. Questing Beast. At least there's no, no expect of any board clears. And this will be able to let me reshuffle my deck. Just swing in. I don't really care if it gets blocked. Oh, I figured you need the mana more than you need me to to eat it. Okay. land so that we can play the questing beast it's a food deck probably simic food I am fragile. Thing is, I can actually afford to keep going with this. I don't know if you can. You have man you have a lot of mana, I will admit, which is a problem problem, but not the worst thing in the world.
we're gonna have to start blocking, which is gonna be fun. If the questing beast goes through, you are fucking dead. Get blocking, boys. Those lands are dead. You're losing all your mana. Yeah, uh, you were clearly, like, I was gaining and you were losing at that point. That was, that was not great for you. Uh, I can see where, um, what was going on there. That, 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 that must have felt bad. Okay, we gotta level up, so. Let's actually use this mastery real quick. On the point... To blow, because I want to try to get to the little scions. So that's the end of the blue court. Let's open this pack that we got. Ooh, that's cool. I'm kind of surprised Ginger Brood isn't in the mono red deck. Oh, it might be. I didn't actually look at the list, um, but I haven't seen it. Hmm. Once upon a time will give us the fixing we need. Um, so I'm going to actually keep this hand. Let me get the, the first scry. Cast this. Yeah. Mm. I made the wrong choice. That's fine. Well, this is a mono black deck. So, 
play forest into vision. Wow. Power move. Sting Beast will be our turn for play. From the looks of it. Or it could be the Spawn of Mayhem. Actually, what I could even do, uh, if, he, if they choose not to attack, I could choose to... Um, oh no, plus three, plus three. That would make him a five, four. Hmm. Huh. I see. That's smart. Interesting. Okay, I'm about to say, you haven't played your, um... I'm gonna let it through. Get your power. Go on. surprised. Oh, okay. Why do you have that in this deck? I'll block with the Paradise Druid. let you just keep discarding cards. Oof!
Yep. That sucks. For you. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not gonna lie, I was really, I was, I, I was beating him with that, uh, or them, with that last one hoping to dump their mana into it, getting rid of Questing Beast. I don't know if either one of those modes actually saves you right now. We're gonna... Actually, no, because if we attack with, uh, with both, uh, they actually have the block hit. Oh! No, this is just the end of the game. The Great Henge, the fact that it gives you the card draw, and the power boost, and the life gain, and the mana, it's just so good of a card. It, it, and the downside that, that it's a 9 mana card is a, is a negligible cost, because you're not actually going to pay long for it. You're going to pay, like, at most, 5. But you're probably not even going to pay that. You're probably going to pay 4, maybe even 2. Just 2 mana. Um... It, it's just such an absurdly powerful card for its cost. And I was not expecting to do quite as well as I am um, right now with this deck. I was expecting to get um, fewer games in overall, so uh, we don't. I don't know how much longer we will actually go on for. Not the worst opening hand. Opponent goes first, so hopefully we get a land that we can play untapped. Okay. If this is a life gain deck, that that it's not bad. If this is only this is also just a um this is a flyer's deck. Okay. And though not getting my third land is going to be um, troublesome. Wow, okay, holy shit. Um, damn. Fucking shit. Uh, this might be the one I actually lose. <sighs> yeah, I I surrender. There's no way I can I can keep up with this no matter what my playline is. Good game. That was fast. If I had gotten my third land drop, that might have been a different story because I would have been able to have Questing Beast out. But uh, yeah, that wasn't in the cards. this play this tapped and then uh, go look for Ooh. 
Ooh, choices. Um, yeah, let's go for Questing Beast. That's always a solid, uh, solid card to pick. Hey, Kellerak. I am a sorry that YouTube recommends Dr. Disrespect as, as, as one of your, your, um, people. That sucks. That is, a, that is terrible news. What is this? Oh, this must be some weird, um, janky artifacts deck. That's cool. I'm actually just gonna pump up, uh, Night of the Age. Best to hold back my cards for when I need them. Worst case, I can. Uh, oh, this might. Okay, okay. You made your statement. I was gonna need to die. There we go. That's your deck. It's Dance of the Mance. Thankfully, with the Questing Beast, I can get rid of Narset and swing in for big ups. Die! Let's just play the other one. See if he removes it. I, I am curious because what I what I will okay yeah my plan was if he somehow board swept swept the board, I would just use assassin trophy to bring back my questing beast and swing for the win. Um. There's Mance is a fun card, but uh, he just wasn't fast enough on the draw. I was able to get in with with too many big th big swings big, um, quickly, and Questing Beast is a very good card against Planeswalkers because of its uh, Questing Beast's ability to deal damage to a player and a Planeswalker at the same time is so strong, and it has Death Touch, which makes blocking it very very annoying and difficult. It's hard to overstate how important that card is for keeping um, keeping big threats from becoming a problem. Yeah, I have also noticed that too, Kelly. That the games have been very short. Like uh, I, I have jammed many more games in this one session than I expected to. I'm actually. I'm going to throw that away for now, because I don't really have a solid playline for it yet. e -wilds to start I means this is probably a cheaper deck. It does not mean bad. It does mean that uh, there are certain considerations that this deck is probably taking into account. I'm going to play Fable Passage because it has to come out untapped at this point. But it does let me get out one of my forests. Interesting. You're playing very slowly. I'm gonna play this forest so that I can pump you up. Swing in for big ups. And if it dies, that's also fine. Right on schedule. I'll protect you. Alright, and then I get to play for four mana Questing Beast. And let me let me tell you how good this card is. Because it lets you swing at planeswalkers without actually swinging at planeswalkers. When it does damage to a player, you do that much damage to a planeswalker they control. So I can swing at him and his planeswalkers at the same 
fucking time. And that is so beautiful. That's so beautiful. I love it. Play this so I can get the damage bonus. Uh, and we will play Overgrown Tomb Untapped for now and end the turn. I want to have Murderous Rider available. That's fine. It's actually not a big deal at all. Assassin's Trophy for more removal. Okay, this is actually good because I can choose to Murderous Rider, Assassin's Trophy, or for Chamber Guardian depending on what gets played. ability now, actually, to tutor for another one. Might be a bad idea. I'm not really in a hurry to get rid of Teferi. Teferi's not a big issue for me right now, so I can afford to, to hold off a turn to kill him. No, I can't play my removal instant speed. I can still play it for instant speed. Here goes nothing. Perfect. Beautiful. That is beautiful. That is that is killing two big things. That is killing a big thing. Throughout the multiverse. Fine. Kill it. Kill a 2 2. Because I am going to kill you, you. I've got time. I will protect the virtue of this world. Virtue of this world. <laughs> Funny. The land fights for us. You will feel the lick of my flames. So I get to kill both of these problems. Impossible. Fuck you. Let's kill Nissa too. The land will not forsake you. A lot of planeswalkers in this fucking deck, though. I mean, those exist, Kelly. They're called Super Friends decks.
Teferi is, a, is actually not that big of a problem, if I'm being perfectly honest. Here we go. I can let him keep the ferry for a while. Wow. Alright, once upon a time. Once upon a time. I had a questing beast! Once upon a time, I had a spawn of mayhem, and I used a murderous rider to kill Chandra. Guess you don't need me anymore. The Questing Beast! Kill them all! Only time will tell. I've killed a lot of their planeswalkers at this point. to pay for Castle Lothwain if... Okay. That's annoying, but not worst. Not the worst thing in the world. If you show remorse, I'll show restraint. Let's try this. Uh, the questing beast assigns quests. He doesn't take part in them. can attack at instant speed, so we're gonna swing in. We're going in! The questing beast gives noble knights the quests. He doesn't actually take part in quests on, on, on their own. Another Teferi? Is that- that has to be your last one, right? Jesus H. Christ on the cross! I have a plan.
I won't forgive this. Yeah, there we go. That was taking way too long. Uh, but yeah, he put up a good fight. A lot, lot of Planeswalkers in that deck. Um, a lot of Planeswalkers in that deck. I think I got time for one... <clears throat> pardon me. One more match before I call it a day. Although, this has been a very successful stream. I think I only, only lost one match, and that was to Azorius Flyers. Ali from Cairo. Or is that Ali? Mm hmm. The Rankle. Master of Prankles. It's worth taking that two damage to do to play a turn one Evan Knight Legion. And this will allow us to play Alright, uh... I'm gonna use Murderous Rider here instead of, uh... I actually don't want... I'm more concerned about the ability to get Great Henge out on turn 3, or on turn 4. Alright. So, let's instead play... Instead of using Removal Spell, we'll use an Edict. We will use Rankle, the Master of Prankles. To have each player sack a creature. Now, I will lose the Knight, but it's worth it to get rid of that 7-6. Okay! I, uh, I guess they were hoping to Great Henge after, um, Riding Registrar, which they just never got the chance to. But, um, I think that's gonna be it for the stream. Uh, this deck was uh, very, very powerful. Um, There's a, a decent amount of removal, uh, like seven removal spells total, plus Rankle for uh, the Edict effect if you need him. Um, the uh, the Knight and the Grotim Guardian end up being very powerful. Questing Beast does so much work. Like, it's... It's a legendary creature, so normally you don't want um, four copies of it. But it's such a good card and will probably get killed uh, as soon as it gets played that it's it's worth um, having all four copies of it. Because Vigilance, Death Touch, and Haste. Oh, I forgot he couldn't be blocked with Future Power 2 less, which is why that Paratrooper wasn't blocking, because it couldn't. It couldn't block. Um, and... It had to go through. Um, just so much power in a single card. Um, and especially in after a set of 36 Planeswalkers in one set, having that last effect that when it deals combat damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to a target Planeswalker that player controls. In a, in a format where Planeswalkers have become very common because... There's no reason not to have them. That is a very powerful ability. Because it makes... Because the, the thing with Planeswalkers is that... They also um, are essentially extra life because you have to dedicate attacks to taking care of them before taking care of your opponent. 
but Questing Beast kind of negates that advantage because you can attack the opponent and then also damage the Planeswalker. But overall, like um, like Great Henge, that card does literally everything you'd want a, a card to do in green. Uh, mana gain, life gain, power gain, and card draw. Um, it's, like it's, just, it's just a really, really powerful deck. Um, it, can, it can get get everything you need on the board quickly for a, for a win. Um, and I've noticed that this that this format, as as you said, um, Kellerak in the chat, uh, this format is very fast. Uh, like you you play pretty quickly. Like you noticed a lot of a lot of my my matches actually ended within a few minutes of starting. Um, but. Yeah, the deck did a great job. Uh, let's finish off by opening a pack, and then we'll uh, end the stream. That's fine. Uh, so with that, take care, team, and I will see you next time, where I hopefully will have a different deck to show off. Until then, take care, and bye for now.